Hey everybody, Justin here. Wanted to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look at what happened this past Christmas with some of the creative elements that you saw in our Christmas Eve services. Many of you may know that we go away uh, as a creative team, several of us here on staff, uh, to dream up and pray about what God has for the services for this year, for the bigger services like Christmas and Easter and other other services as well. And every year we come up with some amazing ideas. We have such a talented team of creatives. And uh, this year, as we were approaching Christmas, we had this great idea to do kind of this uh, prelude moment during the Advent uh, season, you know, kind of a Peter and Wolf idea of each instrument that was in a string quartet would represent one of the women in the genealogy of Jesus. And we're like, man, this is a great idea, but how do we execute something so great? Like we had this great idea, but how do we fulfill it? And so I started asking our community of worshipers and just talking to different people that I know um, in strings music and, and all that. And uh, uh, I got this name of Brandon King. Joining me today is Brandon King. And uh, Brandon, you grew up in Mission Hills, is that right? I did, yep. I grew yeah. up going here. So cool. And then you went to school? Uh, Colorado Christian University. Colorado Christian. And so you're, you're not major, too far. You're major majored in, in music production and engineering and music composition. I don't know if you've heard the piece yet. We're going to have an opportunity later to point you to the video, the finished production of this string quartet idea. Brandon, it's great to just sit down and talk with you. Thank you. It's good to have you here just to kind of talk through the creative approach for each one of these individual sure. stringed instruments because I came at you like it was right before Thanksgiving season. Yeah. And we were trying to miss, we kind of missed each other for a while, you know, and talking uh, through what I was looking for. And I was like, man, I don't even know if I'm like translating the idea correctly to you or not. And just talking about, hey, you know, the, the first week of uh, Tamar, you know, just like this is her story. And so the violin is going to represent that. And then the second week, you know, having the violin too, and then going on and, and, and going further. Uh, and so kind of take us through, let's just kind of go through each part sure. here. Um, and I know that your creative process probably wasn't thinking of the Bible character itself, but I asked you to do something that I thought was almost impossible at the time when I said, hey, can you make them all stand on their own, but also work together? Yeah. And um, we, we gave you some examples like Carolyn Shaw, yep. who, who writes these great dissonant pieces with lots of different things going For sure. on. sure, yeah. And I remember sending you like the Orangery uh, mm -hmm. piece Beautiful of her piece. music, amazing piece of music. And I was like, man, if it's anywhere close to this or even like 50% of this, I'd be blown away. But like, you know, like I got 40% of the way you, there, so. you <laughs> delivered high and above. And so Let's just talk through like the violin right. one part. Like, yeah. what was your approach on some of that? Violin one specifically was very driven by the biblical story of Tamar. Yeah. Um, you'll notice it's very, it's got some lighter moments in it, but overarching, it's very dramatic, very flowing. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to highlight just that drama of these are broken people that are being used. That aspect really started. I started with that melodic line. Yeah. And then went from there. That was probably the hardest bit to get going um, just to get started and have that really strong melodic um, component yeah um, violin two came shortly after that one is definitely meant to play off that yeah. violin one bit just in the way that all these lives are intertwined throughout the biblical story this genealogy right um, they're all very crucial components right So I know a lot of times violin two is just kind of like, you play it off. It's a support like, part. Support. Like, yeah, it's not really, it doesn't stand on its own, but I like violin two because it has these nice little uh, light uh, dancing yeah, yep. kind of phrases. Especially in it. that B section, yeah. yeah. Very supportive, but it also like, it says its point. Then we move to viola, viola. with Ruth's story. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one was probably the most fun to write. Yeah. Um, you'll notice the viola is triplets all over the place very fast it's really the movement of the piece yeah we were sitting in the studio and uh you know you had composed this piece um like two weeks before thanksgiving and we were under a time crunch to get it done because yep. uh, we had to have the series bumper up and going for week one of advent right after thanksgiving and uh you were under a time crunch to get it done. I was under a time crunch to get it from you and then get it to string players to practice enough. I think they right. had like a three-day turnaround. 
And the viola they did great. Uh, gal uh, specifically said, this is one of the most challenging things that I've ever played, but she loved it. They all exclaimed how much they loved it. Yeah, and the thing about this piece is it took a while to get started, but once it was rolling, yeah. it came together so fast. I find that a lot of times, like in pieces like this, when it's a story-based thing, you really just have to get that ball rolling and then the, the ideas flow from there. It was probably five days of sitting at the keyboard with nothing. I and was then... kind of blown away <laughs> that it was five days. Yeah. I was like, man, I don't write this in a lifetime. But uh, <laughs> I guess someone who's uh, gone to school for composition would uh, maybe have some ideas on how to <laughs> get the ball rolling. It but, was just funny with, like, you text me, like, where are we at? Where are yeah, we at? Yeah. Are we there yet? And I'm like, I'm working on it. And yeah. then I think I sent you nothing, and then I sent you all of it together, or very You sent close. me, like, I think the A section, mostly yeah, the A section, yeah. and I was like, my gosh, yeah, this <laughs> is right on core. Like, even if you don't write anything else, this is really, really good. So then the cello part for Uriah's wife uh, yeah. last week. Yeah, so the cello part is, I, I think a lot of times cello, similar to violin too, it's the support, um, you're playing the bass, but the cello part with this is, again, very melodic. And I think that was the really the crux of this piece is everything has to stand on its own in yeah. some component. Yeah, everything is kind of to me that that cello yeah, just yep. kind of sings on its yep. own. Very vocal lines here. At the very end, you kind of take us in this little uh, twist of dissonance. Uh, right. this minor to major uh, feel. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so that was a very out of the box way to write for me. I don't normally go that direction, yeah. but I thought that especially this story and just the Christmas story in general mm. warranted this very surprising finale, if you will. Wow. So it really takes a sharp turn, very chromatic at that point, but it's just opening yeah. up to this full on major chord to end it. So I think that was the perfect way to yeah. really portray the light coming to the world in this otherwise dark story. And so when you sit down and you're composing something for a four part string quartet, you know, like you're going through this process, I think you alluded to it a little bit uh, there, but like you sit down to the keyboard first, is that right. kind of where you start? Yeah, so I, I'm a piano player, that's my main okay. thing. So I write everything on a keyboard, yeah. whether it's strings or not. Um, I have my expression pedal that I can kind of play the volume as I'm playing, okay, but yeah. everything, I don't write like the notes yeah. right off the bat. I'll, I'll just hit record and play. So really? a lot of what I do is improvisation. Yeah. Um, so I improvise most of it yeah. and then I pick what I like and then I do it more intentionally. Okay. So. And then how do you take these great ideas once you find the intention and you're like, this is it, how do you transfer that to the, to the page? Very an after the fact thing for me. Yeah. So once I have everything like the way I like it, I open a different software um, and then I will just go through. Um, usually I'll import the file right. so I have that MIDI information. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just adjust and tweak and then write the dynamics and the yeah. expression. Yeah. that I have played. Right. Back in my day, I think it was Cakewalk. Was <laughs> yeah. Like, like, where are we at now? So I, I, I use Logic for my okay. main tracking. Yep. And then Dorico, okay. which is Steinberg's, um, it's a newer, newer oh. development. So yeah. yeah. And that helps you kind of just play it and put it right to music a little bit mm -hmm. and then make tweaks for right. how it lines up with the yep. measures and all that. And exactly. Timing, right? Yeah. Yep. That was amazing. And then you sent me um, that first half of it in like a MIDI file and it was like uh, I thought that they, you were like I kind of gave him a you know a little bit of a tweak so that it sounds as, as real as can be I was like man even if we went with this <laughs> yeah. this would be okay right here. it is really amazing how far yeah. like sampled instruments it is have come. incredible piano is great like virtual now you can hardly tell yeah. and strings are are following suit pretty close yeah. What other projects are you working on right now? So right now, I actually work at Denver Christian School. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm the technical director there. I'm kind of on a different end of music. Yeah. Uh, I'm behind the board. But it's really, really cool to me to be able to do both sides of this. Yeah. So I went into school, like, dreaming of composition. Yeah. And then I fell in love with the production side. Um, but I never wanted to give up that compositional component. Right. So to be able to be doing both right now is truly a dream come true. What are some of the things that you're doing right now in composition that, that you know, beyond like <laughs> being uh, 
invited to do something for a church like this? What are some of the things that you enjoy or that you've been doing for composition? So I I have two singles out on Apple Music, uh, just under the name Brandon King. Oh, right on. Um, and I just kind of, I compose all over the place. Yeah. Um, a lot of orchestral, um, a lot of jazz influence stuff as well. Wow. I'm looking more to put more of that stuff out there, but yeah. right now it's just the two singles. Yeah, and have you been commissioned for other gigs yet, no, or is that kind of what you're looking more to do? Yeah, yeah. this is the first, That's but awesome. I'm really open to it. I love doing it, so. Well, I don't know why anybody <laughs> wouldn't use uh, you for those great projects. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. It all kind of came together. I don't know that I gave you too much feedback. We wanted to start with this great tension of the tremolo on that violin. Right. Violin violin one see i can't talk either <laughs> hard, uh, the though. violin one part with that tremolo just really impactful mm -hmm. getting your attention but also the tension of the the stories that are about to be told and unfolding kind of yeah. like you would do in any thematic uh, this is the start of a story yeah um, and uh, you just nailed it and it all came together beautifully and it's been such a amazing part our our creative piece of of advent uh, this prelude season was to provide a moment we all sat there in the creative process and said what can we do for our church in a season that is so busy and so filled with so many different things that would allow them a time of breath, allow them a time of pause? And so we had that A section to really just unpack kind of on the screens the story of each individual woman. And then that B section was a scripture and an invitation to take a moment, take a breath. And the music supported that so well each and every week. And I was so thankful. Thank you. Uh, just to have that as a part of what we did here. And I just wanted our church to know that there are some really intentional pieces. We're always looking to be crazy with our, our creative ideas, but we're also wanting to, you know, like do something um, that is impactful you know, for people in a season that can be so busy. And man, Brandon, you just nailed it. And we're so thankful Thank to you. have you as a part of our creative process. And Thankful just, to be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, and we wish truly. you the best. And, and Thank you. Uh, if people want to find you, like we or, will put uh, up Brandon his information King. right here, and you can find that attachment yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for someone to compose uh, music. But uh, if you want to hear the full thing together, all of the string parts equaled out, look for the link in our video here, and that will get you over to the video of Prelude. Thanks for joining us.